So now let's talk about how to graph an inverse function. For an invertible function f, we sketch the graph of f inverse by taking the following steps. So one, you sketch the graph of f. Two, you choose several points that lie on the graph of f. Although, honestly, you could choose the points first, which is what I'm about to do. Um, and then for each point a, b chosen in step two, you plot b, a, and then sketch that curve. So let's take a look, shall we? So I have a function here, which is f of x is negative 2x plus 3. But the technique I'm going to show you works no matter what you're going to use. Now remember, you you know, hopefully, how to fill in that table. Um, the y-intercept is 3, and then you're going down by a slope of 2 every time. So you go to 1, then negative 1, then negative 3, and so on. Then it must be working 5, 7, 9. That's all stuff that we learned back in chapters, well, actually chapter 1. But if you don't believe me, so let me clear this out clear. If I type negative 2x plus 3, and then I go to the table. Oh, got to go up. I'm not at the right starting spot. Sorry about that. Got to press up a lot. There is another way to do it, but I'm just going to do it this way now. Hey, look, it's the same numbers I was getting. See? I wasn't lying to you. Oops, I pressed up too many times. There we go. I got it. Okay, so negative 3 went to 9, negative 2 went to 7. Notice you're going down by 2 every time. That's a sign that it's linear, right? Because that slope is what you're dropping by. We learned all of that in chapters 1, 2, and 3. And then your y-intercept was 0, 3, right there. Okay, so then we could graph that line, and we learned how to graph that line again back in chapter 1. Well, honestly, you knew that before you ever got into this class anyway. But let me bring it up. Hold on one sec. Poof, there we go. Okay, so I've got the line in there. Notice that it starts at 3 for the y-intercept, moves down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so on. Beautiful. Okay, so I kind of went opposite of what he said to do, but, you know, I got the idea. <laughs> so I actually did step 2 first. I chose points and then graphed those points and drew a line. Remember, you're supposed to have arrows on either end of it, but I can't do that on the program I work from. Okay, and then it says it wants the graph of f inverse and actually y equals x as well. Now, I'm going to graph y equals x right this second. Let's get that done because y equals x. Well, actually, no, I won't. I take that back. I'll do the opposite. So the thing about the inverse function is that it's going to go reversed, right? So you're going to take that table that you made and you're going to go backwards with it. And that's the whole point of an inverse function. Remember, we did that um, a page ago or so. Oopsie, one, sorry, two, three. So it takes that table and it makes it work in reverse. Okay, so then we could graph these points and make a line out of them. So let me do that. Poof, there they are. So I've got those points down now, right there. And of course, there are more I could have graphed, but you know, these are the ones I made out of my table. All right, well then, once I have those points, you can see they're forming a straight line. So now I can draw that line. There we go just like that. And there we've got that line. Beautiful. So we've graphed the real function, which I graphed in green, if you want to block it out, right? So the function I graphed in green is the original function. And then I graphed the inverse function in blue. Hopefully you're not colorblind. <laughs> Ooh, that's terrible. I don't want to do that to you. How about I make it like a soft blue? But you get the general idea. All right, now I also want to graph the line y equals x. Now remember, y equals x is a line, right? Because it's y equals mx plus b. I, mean, I need to pick a color that, um, how about I do it in like a kind of a red? How about that? So y equals x, the slope is 1, right? Because it's 1x plus b, but there's no b, so it means plus 0. So this is essentially the same thing as 1x plus 0, right? y equals x. All right, mx plus b. Same thing. Okay, well, I can do that. Hold on, let me grab a, my computer program. But you're going to start at 0 and then go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, right? There we go. Got it. Right there. And if you notice, there's some interesting things going on here, and that's why we had you dropping this line. So the blue line and the green line, do you see them? It's, it's kind of intriguing. It sort of forms like a butterfly pattern. Do you notice it? And it's because, and this is what we wanted you to see down here, that is, 
let me read it to you. For an invertible function f, and we haven't really talked about what invertible means, but it just basically means that the function can have an inverse, and we're just going to let it be at that. The graph of f inverse is a reflection. See how they're kind of reflections of each other? But it's not a typical reflection you guys are used to. You're used to vertical reflections across the x-axis or horizontal ones across the y-axis. But these are reflections across that line that I drew, that red line. Do you see it? If I could fold my screen up or paper up or whatever along that red line, this blue would be on top of that green, and this blue over here would be on top of that green. They'd, they'd be on top of each other, sort of like what you did when you used to make you know, snowflakes and hearts as a kid with paper, right? Poof, and there we go. So they're inverses of each other across the line y equals x. And that's the other thing to keep in mind, is that f and f inverse are inverses of each other. So it sounds kind of strange, but f is one function, f inverse is of its inverse. If f inverse was your starting function, let's say the blue one was your starting one, then the green one would be its inverse. They're inverses of each other. They unravel each other, right? So for example, let me just give you an example. So if you had f of x, f of x was equal to x plus 2, just for the sake of it, then the f inverse of x would be equal to x minus 2. They're opposites of each other. And of course, then the question becomes, well, how do you figure that out for more complicated things? Like, we all know addition, hopefully, and while I'm on the subject, let me give you a multiplication one. It's going to rock your world. Suppose I tell you g inverse is 2 times x. Anyone want to take a guess what g inverse is? x divided by 2. See? So when there's just one single operation, that's not hard. Well, at least at this point, because you know, adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing, that's stuff you learned as a kid. So they're all obvious inverses of each other. But what do you do when it's more complicated? What do you do when it's some ugly formula with some kind of story problem? Oops, sorry about that. Then that's trickier, right? So we're going to need some methods for that, and that's where we're going to pick up in the next video. So I know this was kind of a short one, but the next problem's so long, I'd rather try to do it all in one. So I'll see you back here for the story problems and some other stuff. So we know how to do simple ones. Let me make this note. So simple inverses examples are right here. But more complicated inverse examples are going to have to wait because they actually are pretty tricky to find. Um, and of course, you only know a couple basic operations simply. But what about powers? you don't know how to do those. What about when the variable is the power? You don't know how to do that either. So you've got some issues um, with anything that's more complicated than very simple adding, very simple multiplying. Anything, even if I put multiplying and adding together, you're in trouble. Let me, let me throw that example in here. So if you had h of x is equal to 2x plus 5, I got news for you. We don't know what it is. Not yet. We're going to have to figure that out. Um, it's going to be complicated. Okay? So we don't know what it is yet, but we will learn it, and we will learn it very soon in just another page or so. Okay? All right. So keep in mind that functions are inverses of each other. Great. And then you already know instinctually some of this stuff. And then also keep in mind that they've got this whole inverse thing going on. And then keep in mind the table flipping. There's a lot of things and a lot of concepts to keep track of. But how to find them for more difficult problems, we're going to learn that next time. See you then.